on the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were gathered together, doors locked for fear. You know, it's quite incredible that the resurrection stories speak so powerfully into what is happening around the world at the moment with regard to the COVID-19 pandemic. Doors locked for fear. And here we are, all isolated in our own homes, many people fearing of what lies outside of them, waiting for the world to change, but nobody quite knows what it's going to look like. I mean, none of us do. Doors locked for fear. Fear of the virus, fear for our loved ones, fear for our jobs or our careers or for fear of the economic consequences and the fallout. Fear of the future. Are things ever going to be the same again? Fear that others will blame us or point the finger. Fear for our well-being. You know, I had a telephone call from a complete stranger who rang me this last week who is living in a one-bed bedsit and he has asthma and he has diabetes and he was absolutely terrified of stepping outside. A phone call from a stranger because I was a man of the cloth. You know there are other fears that keep us behind locked doors. Fear of being hurt, fear of being vulnerable with another person, safer to stay locked, fear of relationships. You know sometimes we even lock the door to God. And fear does strange things to people. Did you know, for instance, that over the Easter weekend, there were 20 attacks on 5G masks around the United Kingdom because people were fearful that COVID-19 could be spread by telephone masks. And in fact, one of them actually prevented family and friends from being able to ring out from one of the Nightingale hospitals in Birmingham. I mean, how irresponsible and idiotic is that? But fear makes people do strange things. I mean, let's look back to Good Friday for a moment. Do you think people mocked Jesus on the cross because it was fun? No, of course not. They were absolutely terrified. Point the finger at someone else and the spotlight's not on you anymore. It was fear that made the religious leaders scream for Jesus' crucifixion because they were afraid that Jesus would tip the status quo upside down. Ironically, of course, through the very crucifixion, the things that they called for uh, was the very means by which the world was turned upside down. It was fear that made Peter deny Jesus. It was fear that made Judas betray Jesus. Fear. Fearful that Jesus wasn't going to be the Messiah that Judas hoped he would be. And now after the resurrection, we've got a bunch of disciples in a room, doors locked for fear. They are frightened. They are afraid of those same religious authorities. Most of the disciples have got uh, northern accents. They stick out a mile. And if their leader can take away, be taken away and be crucified, so can they. Doors locked for fear. And of course at this stage, as we heard from our reader from John chapter 20 there, none of the disciples have seen Jesus yet. It's only Mary Magdalene that's seen him. Peter and John have gone to the empty tomb. They've seen the tomb empty, but that could mean anything. If the body is missing, are the authorities trying to draw out Jesus' followers into the open? Are they waiting for them to make some ludicrous claim that Jesus is risen from the dead and just as they step out into public, they show the body? The following weekend, you got another load of crucifixions. Well, actually, even disregarding that, the disciples did not believe Mary Magdalene. And in fact, if you read Luke's Gospels, Luke actually tells us that the disciples thought that the women were talking nonsense. Doors locked for fear. And it wasn't just the authorities that that door was keeping locked out. I suspect it was their fear that their faith had come to nothing. They must have felt really foolish. They must have felt disillusioned. They must have felt fearful of the future, wondering if things would ever be the same again. 
There's an echo. That's why the resurrection speaks so powerfully into what's happening at the moment. Or actually, I wonder if they were frightened and fearful because what Mary said she saw was true. What if he had risen? The disciples hadn't exactly uh, covered themselves in glory. And you can imagine the conversation. You know, Peter, I've got some good news for you and some bad news. The good news is that Jesus is risen. The bad news is that he's still pretty ticked off about last Friday. I mean, imagine it. Two days ago, you denied your best friend. You ran away when it mattered most. You and all your mates who have professed undying loyalty, who had argued about who was the most important person at the table, you'd all bolted for safety. You had left Jesus there to face his arrest and that kangaroo court of a trial and the suffering and the mockery in front of the soldiers and the crucifixion on his own. Wouldn't you be glad that the doors were locked? It would keep out any thought of having to face Jesus. Doors locked for fear that it might be true. And maybe worst of all, the doors were locked because they thought it wasn't true. You ever seen the film Clockwise? I love John Cleese. Uh, John Cleese is a headmaster and he is absolutely obsessed with punctuality and his school has won an award for its achievements and John Cleese is invited to be the keynote speaker at a conference for head teachers uh, to inform them how he turned a, a failing school around but he misses his train and he leaves his speech behind and he ends up in a car breaking down and all other matters of uh, matters of catastrophe. But there's one point when he gets really close to getting to the conference on time and then something else goes wrong. And John Cleese sits in the middle of the road and he said, you know, it's not the despair. I can stand the despair. It's the hope I can't stand. And you can almost hear the disciples thinking as they uh, sit in that room, you know, I can't bear to have my hopes raised only to see them dashed a little further down the road. Well, into all of that comes Jesus. He opens the door. And what does he say? How dare you leave me there on my own? How dare you leave me to face my trial? How dare you run away uh, when I was arrested? How dare you not be there when I was crucified? How could you have doubted me? What kind of follower are you? He doesn't say any of that. What he says is, peace be with you. It isn't just a greeting. It's one of those moments when it's not just a door that's unlocked, it's a heart. It's a sudden realization that Jesus Christ is there, absolutely right there with them in the crisis in the sorrow and in the waiting and in the uncertainty of what lies ahead. These resurrection stories speak so powerfully into what we are facing as a world, as an island and as families and individuals together. And just in case they haven't quite grasped what he meant, Jesus says it again, peace be with you. And it underlines one of the great truths of the Christian faith. No door needs to be locked to Jesus Christ. You know, as I look back over the last uh, couple of weeks and the things that happened over Easter and the, and the way that we, we all kind of did Easter differently, in some ways it's actually been easier for us to open our doors and unlock our doors as Christians in this pandemic, to be you know, a little bit bolder in our faith and to join in the great effort that absolutely everybody else is making and to make some gestures so that people know that we're Christians. Hang a cr cross up on your gate, a banner, ring the bells, whatever it is that we've done. You know, the world is sympathetic to us at the moment. We even had the government promoting the singing of a hymn on Easter Day. I mean, who would have thought that? You know, 
quick, let's unlock the, the door and let's get out there. But what about when this is all over and we go back to normal, whatever that phrase will mean? Will we still be bold? Will we still leave the door open? Doors locked for fear. It's a common problem with us as Christians as we navigate such a complicated world. The easiest thing is to shut the door on it and to have our faith in the safety of the small group of believers that are surrounding us. My prayer is that during this time of isolation, as we sit behind closed doors, my prayer is that we'll not only know the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ coming into that situation, into that waiting, into that uncertainty about absolutely everything. But also that we'll be bold, that we will unlock the doors of whatever it is that we might hide from, that we may know the hope and the joy of the resurrection, not just as a story, but in our own lives, as we find ourselves stepping out of our locked doors and returning to community life. On the first evening of the week when the disciples were gathered together, doors locked for fear. Well, let's open those doors and proclaim the word and works of God and rejoice in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ with boldness. Amen.